Of course, not everyone can afford to have Raphael paint the School of Athens on their library wall. The Vatican can, but that's a whole different story. So, let's talk about wall decoration in the Italian Renaissance. Now, looking at this, this is uh, Villa de' Medici in Florence, what you see is a pretty typical upper class wall decor. It's all in fresco, so it's all being painted on wet plaster very, very quickly, and it's meant to trick the eye. It's also very much based on the wall paintings that we saw in Rome, where they're breaking, or sorry, in Pompeii, where they're breaking up that space into multiple motifs. Some of it is marbleizing or false stone. Some of it is tiny details that draw you in. There are elements that are mixed. There are architectural elements. There's a lot going on there. Now, one of the typical elements that we see in Italian Renaissance interior spaces is the use of a heavy cornice. And these cornices will set off the ceiling from the wall. They're also typically deep enough at this time to act almost as shelves. Today, we would love a space like this because a cornice would allow for hidden lighting or something along those lines. Very, very practical today. But for them, they're simply trying to separate the horizontal of the ceiling, or arch in this case, from the vertical of the walls. And this sort of subdividing is really, really common in the Renaissance. They want to bring out those architectural details. They want everything to stand out. They're taking that from the Greeks and the Romans who had similar ideas. Now, we also see the use of patterns. And we see repetitious patterns. For example, what looks like wallpaper here is a pa uh, painted pattern, excuse me. And we see the same repetition up above. While there is some elements like the figures change as we move around this false arcade that's painted in place, we see a certain pattern as well where the trees lie, the use of the arch. Now, this constant use of pattern, if we were to try and do that today, we'd probably do it with some form of wallpaper. But even today, there are people out there who can create these painted patterns. Uh, in their case, this would have all been frescoed. So this would have been incredibly permanent, which is why we still have it today. They also use trompe l'oeil quite a bit, and I've talked about trompe l'oeil a couple of times. I may have even defined it at one point, uh, but here's the definition again. Uh, basically, trompe l'oeil is French for fool the eye, and you're creating realistic imagery to create an optical illusion. What the Florentines, what the Italians are doing at this time is they're trying to create the illusion that walls don't exist, that this is a big open space. In the Renaissance, that's important because windows are really difficult. First of all, the glass is expensive. Secondly, um, many of the structures are going to be fairly dark, even something created by the Medici, because there's only so many windows I can put in before the stonework actually would become unstable. So they use trompe l'oeil to open up the space. They also use it for purely artistic purposes. In this case, uh, this may be a study, this may be any number of other uh, rooms and what we have is this sense of cabinets of wonder uh, or cabinets in space with some kind of seating or desk running around. Of course, none of this is real. This is all done in intarsia, but it's trompe l'oeil in wood in this case. And the idea here is to show off uh, my knowledge. So these are all uh, elements that would give the idea of the seven liberal arts, of a well-educated person, the sort of thing that you don't want to tell someone right outright, but you definitely want to show someone. They will also commonly use relief sculpture. Relief sculpture is any sculpture where the carving is still attached to its backing. Now, typically you would think of relief sculpture as something that's done in marble or something like that for a church or a temple. In this case, what you're seeing is actually terracotta. It's very similar to the roundel I dealt with a little earlier. And this is created out of individual, basically stone tiles that have been fired and then painstakingly glazed and put into place. It's a really difficult technique because the person creating it 
has to create the whole thing, and then you have to cut up parts of it so that it fires properly. And then in the firing, you can have variation in heat uh, inside the kiln, which would result in parts of it shrinking more than others. So you could end up creating five of these before you get one that fits well together. Uh, sometimes these will be uh, created using moldings as well, or molds as well. Then we have Majorca. Now, what we see here is tin glazed pottery that is decorated in colors on a white background. This is a very Italian style. And what you have is a decorative form that's typically hung on walls. You think your grandma is the only one to ever hang plates on a wall, but actually it goes back to the Italian Renaissance and earlier. Earlier, it would have been trade goods, uh, dishware from China that came down the Silk Road. And that would be, of course, ha incredibly valuable. It would have intricate, or er, um, sort of, uh, it would have value in and of itself because of how it came in, because of its rarity. By the time we get to the Italians, the plates are becoming primarily decorative, breaking up the wall space and giving you something colorful to look at. Colorful is good in a predominantly dark household. And remember how they're lighting things, candles and torches, which put out soot and the light is very limited. So they want a light colored space and this fits the bill. We will also see a lot of textile wall hangings. Now in Florence, we will typically see silks like we see on the left. And these wall hangings are in part decorative in part insulation as I've dealt with before. Now, through trade with Northern Europe, primarily Flanders, they will start to get tapestries, which you see on the right. A tapestry is a piece of fabric where the image has be, been woven into it, as opposed to embroidery, which is needlework, uh, creating the image on the fabric. So if it's in the fabric, it's going to be... Sorry, if it's on the fabric, it's going to be embroidery. If it's in the fabric, uh, then it's going to be a tapestry. So these are going to be used very commonly. All of this, of course, is to show off wealth and status, just like, well, pretty much everything else we've dealt with since the beginning of human history.